Hey, this is Mark Swanson of MTC Media. Georgetown Xavier wrap up. Uh, for those who watched it, you know it's 92 91 Georgetown uh, falls by one point. Uh, had a chance at the end. Jay Heath uh, missed, a, missed a shot at the, the front of the rim, contested shot, and uh, Georgetown couldn't corral the rebound. Xavier was able to run out the clock out. It, it seemed that Georgetown. Um, didn't even attempt to foul. I think with it was only two or three seconds left, probably wouldn't have made a difference. But you also need to be aware that there was still time left on the clock, albeit small time. There was still time left on the clock. You got, you got a foul there. Um, Georgetown was led uh, by Jaden Epps, 30 points and 11 assists, as um, Georgetown said at the postgame presser. Uh, this is his first career double-double. Uh, Dontre Styles had 14 points and 10 rebounds, and Supreme Cook had 13 points and eight rebounds. And again, this is not a tough loss for Georgetown. Uh, coming down the end when they've had the lead, they're up by three, a um, little bit under two minutes left. And um, like the Seton Hall game, they just couldn't find a way to close. Also, like the TCU game, they couldn't find a way to close, even on the TCU shot. The shot shouldn't count, but we're not going to. We're not going to litigate uh, litigate that again. Um, Georgetown led most of this game. Uh, Xavier didn't take the lead. Xavier's first lead, well, the last lead is 92-91. And I don't know if this is going to show when their first lead was, but their first lead wasn't until the second half. I think it was at 69-66 to when they took um, their first lead. Georgetown just kept responding, and they kept taking it back, and they kept battling, they kept fighting. And and this is with Supreme Cook with four fouls. Uh, Masood had four fouls. Uh, Drew Fielder had four fouls. Now, G Georgetown did do some things that you can certainly ding them on. Giving up layups after May shots because you're not getting back and communicating when you get back, which is what it was. Everyone was making such this big deal about. It was simply communicating when you, had, when you got back. What Drew Fielder was doing was – as Xavier's big man was rim running, Fielder continuously stopped at the top to identify the guy with the ball. When in reality, he should have probably just continued with the rim runner. That was the crux of a lot of that problem. It's a communication thing. It's a practice thing. There are drills for that, by the way. Um, don't know um, what Fielder's instruction was, if any, uh, during the week on... Uh, Xavier's rim running hard because they do run to the front of the rim hard. Sounds simple. Not every team has that guy rim run that hard the way Xavier has him uh, rim run that hard. So it's a communication issue. But that's, those are just things you can't you can't give up. The guy a little loose with the ball. Uh, the turnovers increased, especially at the end of the first half, like when things started going rickety there in the first half. Um, but in the second half, they pretty much corrected it. Um, Xavier also didn't press as much as second half, which probably was the fact that you had to figure that whatever was going wrong on those back-to-back -back possessions uh, for Georgetown, that Cooley probably fixed that in the in the locker room. Uh, they didn't go back to it um, to the end. Georgetown got to the free throw line 21 times. In a game like this that was as physical and stuff, the referees are picking and choosing what bumps are fouls, which bumps aren't fouls. There were things I give Georgetown a lot of credit for. Talked about the uh, the foul trouble. Having uh, Cook and Fielder in foul trouble a lot of this game. Uh, Masood ended up picking a couple of dumb ones. He picked up his third in, in less than 45 seconds uh, at the beginning of the second half. Um, this is where it hurts Georgetown that Ryan Mutombo is borderline unplayable. This is where it hurts them because this was a game that they need to steal minutes from Ryan and you can't steal minutes from Ryan. And so um, that hurt them inside. Also, it had to be in the scout that um, Olivaro, Olivari, um, a lot of his makes, over 90% of his makes on threes are catch and shoot. And I, I, I watched them catch and shoot all night but going back to the um to the fouls even with that even being in the double penalty with 10 one left or around those parts georgetown managed this game they managed around foul trouble they managed it around 
being in the, that double penalty. They managed around those things and had a realistic chance to win at the end. It was two missed layups. The 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 layup that Epps had, like that rolled off the rim, and then the uh, the Heath uh, missed layup. In games this close, those things count. They really do count. But then it's hard to get on these guys who are playing hard, who are playing the right way, who just played an excellent game that it just so happens that they didn't win at the end. So it's hard to beat them up, but it's those little things. Now, got to be proud of Georgetown. They got 70 shots up tonight. Um, they were 30 for 70 um, from the floor. They're 11 for 23 from the three-point line. And the one thing I will say about the three-point line, Georgetown needed those threes in the first half when Cook and those guys initially got in foul trouble. But you notice they didn't fall in love with it. And so in the second half, they played to their game plan. They got, they tried to get feet in the paint. They tried to get to the front of the rim, whether it was throwing in the cook, whether it was Epps penetrating. They tried all of those things. Uh, beautiful uh, when Xavier went zone, beautiful little duck in by Dontrez Styles that gave him a little free throw line jump shot. They did all of those things in that way. They did some smart things because especially in today's basketball, it would have been easy for them to say, oh, man, we were hot from three in the first half. Let's just keep shooting it, and then you shoot yourself out. Um, but that also showed the maturity of this team, right? But down near the end, Georgetown, you're up, and you continuously give straight line drives up to Claude. Um, in the second half, you know, fouling three-point shooters on terrible closeouts, especially Drew Fielder's fourth foul. That's just inexcusable. That's inexcusable. Those aren't plays where Xavier forced you into something. Those aren't plays where it's a lack of skill set. Those are plays when you have a brain fart. And when you're in these close games and you're not running away from teams and teams aren't running away from you, those end up being the plays that make a difference. Because what everyone's going to do is they're going to look at Heath's play at the end. But truth of the matter is, there are so many game-defining plays leading up to that moment that you have to um, take a look at. Because those are things that maybe instead of Georgetown being only up by three, that they're not up by seven. So then the, the ending plays. By the way, let's get to the ending. I probably buried the lead. Georgetown, Xavier surprised Georgetown on the double. Georgetown did the exact right thing when the double came. And they did the exact right thing, and they got it downhill, and they got the ball to the front of the rim. There is nothing that Xavier did on that play outside of doing something that was unexpected, that was anything earth shattering. So this idea that Sean Miller did this great thing and he did, yeah, he got it out of Epps' hands. And if he got it out of Epps' hands and it forced Georgetown into a stupid shot, that's one thing. But when you got it out of Epps' hands and Georgetown had a layup at the front of the rim, I'm not rewarding you with being the second coming of John Wooden. Just not going to happen, okay? So for those who have their agendas and they want to make Sean Miller into this great coach and to this great person, even though he let an assistant coach go to jail with him, go right ahead. I mean, if that's, that's your if that's your bar of character, that's your bar of character. But going to the basketball court, let's not act like he did something that was just this great thing and, oh, my God, that's really coaching and all that nonsense. They made a play, Georgetown reacted, and made the correct play after that. They just missed the layup. They just missed the layup. So going over some of the numbers, uh, Georgetown shot 43% from the field. Xavier shot 50%. Georgetown shot 48% from three. Xavier um, shot 32%. Georgetown ended the game with only 10 turnovers. Xavier had nine. And to take a look at, you know, just how you get punished off those turnovers, the turnover difference is one. Xavier has 17 points off of Georgetown's turnovers because Georgetown's turnovers, by and large, were live ball. Georgetown only had nine points off of Xavier turnovers. So one turnover difference, yet in points, it's an eight-point difference. And when you lose a one-point game, 
Those things rear its ugly head. Georgetown out-rebound Xavier 38-36. Georgetown had 15 offensive rebounds with 21 second-chance points. Um, that's pretty... Yeah, 15 offensive rebounds, 21 second-chance points. Um, Xavier had 12 offensive rebounds, uh, 10 second-chance points. Um, because of the foul trouble with, with Supreme Cook and somewhat with Drew Fielder, but more Supreme Cook. Um, the points in the paint was 46 to 30. Um, Xavier in part because Claude, those, they all got downhill and, you know, too many times it was straight line drives too many times Xavier got two feet in the paint. So, um, and then the, obviously, as we talked about the live ball turnovers, fast break points, uh, Xavier had 20 and, um, Georgetown had five. And so, uh, those are damning numbers when you're so close to winning. And again, um, not to be the dead horse, we talk about sustainability. And this season being about, is Georgetown doing things that are sustainable? Do you see things in this program that's sustainable that says to you that uh, Ed Cooley can turn this around? Um, if you look over the last three games, the answer is yes. Uh, the Seton Hall game, the UConn game, the game tonight with Xavier, you're seeing what good coaching does. You're also seeing what it's like when you have to take over a program that's burned to the studs. You see, you know, everyone brings up, um, well, not everyone, people bring up these Georgetown blogs, these Georgetown fans, they keep bringing up Rick Pitino. Well, look at him, you know, Georgetown's building while Rick Pitino is winning. Yeah, Mike Anderson didn't have a program that was burned to the studs. He didn't leave Patino a program that was in the shambles that Georgetown was in. They're not starting from the same point. So, you know, that laziness of trying to count wins and thinking you're proving a point, it's just idiotic. You know, it just shows you how much you don't know about basketball, don't know about this environment, don't know about recruiting, don't know about coaching. Uh, what you've seen out of Ed Cooley, especially the last 10-01, which I had said um, on Twitter, this last 10 one boy, we won't have to see Ed Cooley coach. Because with the foul trouble and where that game was, whoo-wee, this game could have gotten away from Georgetown. And what he did, he coached his rear end off. His kids played their rear ends off. And, you know, a couple missed layups at the end. There's the difference between winning and losing. But, you know, the program, I can say right now as of today, you know, the program is in the right direction. Sure, you got to clean up. You can't go to the last 318 without making a field goal. I mean, you can't. Not when you have the talent that you have. Um, you can't let Xavier finish the game making six of their last six field goals. So, Georgetown doesn't make a field goal for 318 and Xavier makes their last six. So, those are the things that need to be fixed with a roster that was put together. And for those who have come on uh, social media and criticize, oh, Cooley could have done more in the portal. What are you talking about? You don't want to get guys for the sake of getting guys. That's what the last coach did. That's what the last coach did. They got guys outside of Masood that can come back next year, that they can build upon it. That's how you build a program. You weren't going to sit around there and sacrifice building a program in year one so you can get four or five extra wins. All right, so instead of having 13 wins, you have 17. But then next year, you've put yourself back because you have nothing to build. This roster was put to build upon. There are going to be guys that are out there. We know how the portal works. There's going to be guys that are out there. They got a, a nice little freshman class coming in. But, you know, ask guys out of the college park about freshman classes and expectations. Um... And so it's building upon. I've said this from the very beginning. If you know anything about basketball, if you know anything about this environment, if you know anything about building a program, year three for Cooley truly is year one. It was never going to be year one is year one. Year three is year one, which is why you have to give him an extended contract because that's the only way to fix it. Now, if you wanted to be impatient, then you fire Patrick Ewan a lot earlier than what you, than what you guys mutually agreed to to end on because then the program is in a different place and then yeah you you have every right to have expectations faster 
But if you know anything about what's going on, you don't compare the program to where St. John's was and where Georgetown is because you sound like a moron. You don't think that year one is truly year one. You understand that year three is year one. Those are things you have to understand, transfer portal, no transfer portal. So, yeah, I do agree with Coach Cooley. I think this team is getting better. I think this team is maturing. I think there's a whole bunch of the things that if you're a Georgetown fan to be excited about. Here's the one thing that you could be excited about. You talk about it being a low bar. You can be excited about being disappointed about tonight's loss. Be excited about being disappointed because there was no disappointment. And the last regime is like, well, here we go again. Yep, we expected this. Well, you knew they weren't going to win. You know, all those things would have been there. You don't say that after a loss like this. You don't say that after a loss like Seton Hall. You don't say that after how you competed against UConn, defending national champions. Which, by the way, last I checked, even when, when they had the injury to Klingon, that, that, that team was doing amazing stuff. Just ask anyone in the Big East. And the way that they won without him, because ask Kim English how hard it's been able to win once Bryce Hopkins went down. It's not easy. All you guys think that you can coach because you think that you had a 5-0 and record in CYO. So you think that you think that you know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. Uh, what Cooley did out there today and how he's kept this team together um, in a game like that and how they stuck together and how they trusted each other. Epps didn't try to make a move and split two. He made the right basketball play. You think Primo Spears would have made the right basketball play? You think Brandon Murray, Brandon Murray would have made the, the right basketball play? Are you kidding me? They would have tried to force going downhill one on four and turned it over and looked at the refs like, oh, my God, why didn't I get a foul? And I, the ref probably would look at them like, if you think that I was going to reward your idiocy, you are crazy. The bar is low because that's where the program was when Cooley took over. Tonight's loss is a tough one, 92-91. Seton Hall's loss, those are two wins at the end of the year in the Big East that they're going to kick their rear ends about not getting. But you cannot let that get in the way of seeing stuff that's sustainable and that the program this team is moving in the right direction. And when they finally got rid of Ewing, anyone, whether you guys want to admit this or not, would have taken that. You would have taken it because it's so much better than where this program would be. All right, guys, that, that's the end of Georgetown. Um, end of the night, tough one there. You will see me again tomorrow at George Mason as they take on St. Bonaventure. And Sunday, Maryland, Michigan State out there at College Park. It's Mark's Watchman, MTC Media.